take a full look at your network with Glasswire. For more information, check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video. When it comes to hard drives, 5400 RPM and 7200 RPM drives absolutely dominate the market as well. There's really not that much of an option. But the old 10,000 RPM drive is still something that you can find online here and there. And there's definitely a couple systems out there still kicking around with these drives. So is it really a viable option and who is it for? So today, let's go ahead and find out whether a 10,000 RPM drive is really worth it here in 2018. But let's face it, if you are making the argument that you can't exactly afford an SSD, so you still have to go hard drive, you may want to reconsider as well. SSDs are getting more and more affordable, and the 10,000 RPM drive is still definitely better performance than a standard drive. But how much better performance is it actually compared to, well, an SSD? And SSDs these days are really cheap, like a 120 gig drive for $50 on the internet. Not too bad there. But the enthusiast inside of me can't be happy with just saying to get an SSD. We must test it for ourselves. And when a WD Velociraptor came across my desk, I knew I could not give up the chance to benchmark it and take a look at what it can really deliver. Now, back in 2012, when this thing was new, the WD Velociraptor, or rather the Raptor first, first came out coming in at 32 gigabytes. This was pre-Velociraptor time. It wasn't really the greatest. And just like low capacity SSDs, sure, you can store your OS on it and like a game or two because back then games weren't 100 million gigabytes but let's face it a 32 gigabyte Raptor drive wasn't exactly the world's most practical and then we got this guy the WD Velociraptor one terabyte drive offering faster speeds at a reasonable price point as back then even well still by today's standards our magnetic storage was and is a lot cheaper per gigabyte than the flash option so a hard drive did definitely make more sense than buying really large SSDs even back then a large SSD was only maybe 500 gigabytes max whereas today we're looking at more two and four terabyte SSDs but back when these guys were new SSDs were expensive and didn't have the storage, so it did make sense that a fast hard drive was an option for people out there. And back when these guys were new, many enthusiasts would not necessarily recommend these for boot drives, like what we recommend these days as SSDs as boot drives, rather as well fast mechanical storage, and that was really the point of these guys. A single WD Velociraptor at one terabyte running as a game drive, or if you are a professional like a scratch drive, would definitely deliver a lot better performance than if you were to run it as, say, the C drive or the boot drive for your system. And you'd even see better performance by putting them in a RAID setup for again that faster and even better performance than a single standard hard drive. And it seems to be pushed more for the professionals and super enthusiasts rather than everyone else out there back when this was released. Now the actual hard drive of this guy is actually kind of really cool. Now because this guy is actually a two and a half inch drive sitting inside of a three and a half inch caddy, you may think, hang on a second, if it's two and a half inch, why not make it bigger and why is it in a caddy? What what is the point of this one? Well, actually, that two and a half inch drive is a thick two and a half inch drive, meaning it's the same thickness as your three and a half inch hard drive, but in the two and a half inch form factor, which isn't interesting to see. Now, the reason why you would actually have this is the actual smaller size of the actual platters inside allow faster access times and combined with a faster RPM, meaning the small discs spin faster, giving you much better performance in that two and a half inch form factor, allowing again for faster reads, faster writes and lower access times. All in all, much better for faster performance. And not to mention, it just kind of looks really cool. I mean, it has a built-in heatsink because obviously running at 10,000 RPM is going to be warmer running than if it was running at 7,200 RPM or 5,400 RPM. So something you need to keep in mind, these guys do get a little bit warm, so adding some cooling to it would definitely be recommended. But damn, this thing does look cool. Two and a half inch drive in an adapter with a badass heatsink on it definitely something I really do like. But enough chatting about this actual drive, what theoretical makes it faster with its smaller disks and faster speeds. Let's actually get into seeing what this guy is actually made of. How does a 10,000 RPM drive stand up here in 2018? Well, first off, we need to take a look at some synthetics and the WD Velociraptor is actually not too bad when comparing to other gear like a new WD Blue one terabyte and even a Seagate Barracuda one terabyte drive. Now, when we compare the Velociraptor to say the WD Blue, which is a much sort of more generic and kind of vanilla drive, not exactly the world's most powerful thing. It still is able to stand up and is definitely a lot faster than the WD Blue. However, when we compare it to more modern high performance drives like the Seagate Barracuda, sure the Barracuda may die sooner, but the drive 
isn't exactly the world's most faster option. When we do jump into some more real world applications, we see that there is maybe a one to two second benefit in terms of load times for games. And if we do our obligatory FPS, obviously nothing is affected here as game FPS is never affected by the actual hard drive you run at. And if we take a look at some gameplay footage of Payday 2, we see there's no real stuttering or lag or anything like that that would come along with inconsistent frames. So all in all, the actual drive itself isn't affecting anything on the gaming front except for load times, which seems to be again about that one or so seconds faster. Not the world's biggest difference, but a difference at that anyway. Now, if we were also to, to throw in a standard SATA based SSD, well, yeah, it even gets blown out of the water. Even an older Samsung 850 SATA based SSD is still able to run circles around this Velociraptor, despite it being one of the slowest drives I have in this room at the moment. And I guess just for the sake of it, here's a latest NVMe WD Black Drive, which is also to a no brainer on how much faster it is. Now, yes, to be clear, an SSD is always going to be much faster than mechanical storage. And also too, to be clear, this is not a hard drive versus SSD debate, but the argument does still need to be acknowledged that if you are going to be spending a bit more on a hard drive, why not just look into the SSD option as opposed to a faster hard drive? It's just one of those things you do need to keep in mind, especially to be considered here in 2018 as storage prices on flash media is definitely coming down quite a lot. And speaking of cost, we do definitely have to touch on this because performance front was definitely okay, better than a standard hard drive, but not as good as an SSD. But price is something of a really big problem. As these drives are discontinued and most 10,000 RPM drives for the consumer side isn't exactly a thing anymore, they can be really expensive to find an in-box unit. Jumping onto eBay, looking around at Australian prices, for a used unit, it's actually not too bad at that 150 to 200 Australian dollars, and even less if you're looking at, say, a 350 or 600 gig, whatever size is smaller than one terabyte. However, if you were set on getting a brand new inbox unit, not only is shipping going to be expensive and probably would break the drive, but the price of the drive itself is absolutely crazy. Anywhere from 400 to 700 dollars plus for a brand new one of these the value just really isn't there. For instance, we can get a Crucial MX500 2 terabyte drive SSD brand new for the same price as one of these drives. Or if you manage to pick up a brand new one for around that $400 price point, a Intel 545 series one terabyte SSD can be picked up for the exact same price. Sure, these drives aren't NVMe or something super special, but even a standard SATA SSD is able to beat out this Velociraptor, meaning that whatever price point you're paying for it new, you could probably get the same size SSD for less or about the same and get way better performance. If you're more on the hard drive side and still wanted to get mechanical storage, you could get standard WD blue drives and you could get enough of them to fill 16.4 terabytes worth of space or just one WD Velociraptor one terabyte. So the value isn't exactly there. And all in all, as I said, the value isn't exactly there anymore for 10,000 RPM drives. It's not as good as it once was where SSDs were super expensive, but now in today's market, even WD has some really good SSD options that won't necessarily break the bank. And seeing that WD has discontinued this line, kind of says something about the 10,000 RPM drives. Sure, it might be really cool to say, oh man, I got a 10,000 RPM drive in my system, but all in all, on a day-to-day -day basis for a modern gaming rig, it isn't exactly the world's best benefit. Don't get me wrong, if you already have one, it's definitely worth keeping it around because it's obviously better performing uh, than a standard mechanical drive, but if you were to build a brand new system, looking at a 10,000 RPM drive versus a standard SSD or even just a standard mechanical hard drive, isn't exactly going to be doing yourself any good, especially when it comes to that price point where 10,000 RPM drives very, very expensive. Now, yesterday wasn't specifically about hard drive versus SSD, but again, as I did mention, it does have to be noted when you are considering the value of these drives. And to put it simply, here in 2018, 10,000 RPM drives aren't exactly worth their price as they once were. If you already have one, definitely keep it around as it's definitely gonna be performing better. But personally, when it comes to large format storage and just large capacities, you really hard push to buy one of these drives, especially with the price that they do come in at. But let me know down in that comment sections, what do you think of 10,000 RPM drives? If they were on the market for a reasonable price, would you buy one? I personally would because they are really cool to look at. They've got like cool heat sinks, and I think they're really cool to have a 10,000 RPM drive. But let me know down in that comment sections. If you want to pick up one of these drives, I'll try and leave some link in that description box. But thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.